Good morning, everybody. This is Deborah with Hello My Garden. And I want to give you a little update today. We did get some rain over the last couple weeks a little bit. Thank you all. Seems every time I ask you, you deliver somehow. Don't know how, but we did get some rain. And as you can see, the plants are pretty happy with it. Uh, that's the comfrey, my chrysanthemums. Uh, milkweed's been chewed up by the milkweed bugs, but uh, it's kicking. And you can see the Rose of Sharon is in blue. Uh, so is this comfrey. And so is this bee balm. And that is the mulberry. It's got a few mulberries on it. And so this area is a little, little more uh, uh, left to just a little bit. Not too much over here. There is a cactus over there and a milkweed there and a little bit of passion flower. So I wanted to show you the echinacea because we have Aster's yellow disease again. Oh, there's a little butterfly. Okay, so over here, see this yellow right there, distortedly, uh, distorted petals? That is Aster's yellow disease. So I am going to have to pull those out and hope it doesn't spread. It is spread by the Aster's um, leaf cutter, is one insect, and it's spread by a, was it a phyto, uh, phytoplasm, something like that, uh, similar to a bacteria. And it's carried by the by the bug, so by the leaf cutter or the leaf um, hopper bug, the asters leaf hopper. And so I got to pull it out. There's no disease, there's no cure for it. Uh, and so I got to pull that out, unfortunately, and hope that it hasn't already spread to the other flowers. I did read that the um, that heat kills it, so that it spreads mostly during a cooler periods. So hopefully the little bit, I just have to hope that the little bit that's here isn't going to spread. Here's a butterfly. I don't know if, you, if I get it in the picture there. Swallowtail. And uh, more passion flower. And the more bee bomb. And the uh, blackberries. We do have a little bit of blackberries on there. I want to show you our palm. There is a lily flower. Can you see it? There we go. It's our palm. There are some frogs there that are inhabiting it lately. Okay. And so instead of more of the wild area, the permaculture area, uh, these are our blueberries, by the way. Um, I want to show you my squashes. Okay, so this is where I plant my squashes, and I plant them the same place every year. A lot of people say not to do that, but it works for me. It's a uh, area that we had just dumped. We had got loads of compost, and we kind of put it there, and we never really got it out spread. We, you know, we used some of it, but we didn't get it all spread out too much and, you know, kind of left it there. And so I just started planting it and it has worked pretty well. Um, this particular plant right here is the Kiwana melon squash. And I did not like it too much because it's very spiky and it's hard to wash. And I like to wash my vegetables pretty good. So um, it hurts <laughs> to wash it. So I'm, I'm going to pull it out, but I left it here as a sort of, um, for the time, previously, as a sort of decoy to the squash bugs and stuff. But I'm going to be pulling it out to give room for the other squashes and watermelons. As you can see, it spreads pretty good. And uh, it, it ends up taking up much of this area, and we let it kind of take over. So, um, but I'm going to pull this part up to allow, allow the other ones to grow. That's, a, that's some right there, too. I think that's a watermelon. Um, I want to show you a picture of one of the squashes coming up too. Where, where, where? Where, where, where? Can you see? There we go. I don't know if you can see it. There's a squash right there. So I really don't spend a lot of time with bug control. There, during um, when I notice the um, squash vine borer is usually if I see yellowing, 
at the beginning of the top of the leaves here. I don't see any right now. It doesn't mean they're not here. I'm just not looking really closely. Um, and I'll cut them out. But I don't spend a lot of time with the bug control these years. After a number of years, you know, after four years of diligence and trying to bring in the predators, the work has gotten less in terms of the bug control because there are predators here. Yesterday I found a wheel bug and with him was a uh, Japanese beetle that was hollow. So he had did his he did his duty, he got his dinner and we were the more fortunate because of it. So you know as they say in some what is it the Bull Durham movie, if you build it they will come. Well if you plant if you plant that balance they will come. So one more thing I want to show you real quick. Um, not this. This is our stinging nettle. Um, my cucumbers. So here are my cucumbers and they're doing great. Now with the humidity here, cucumbers don't last for a whole long time. So I kind of plant them. I overplant them and um, let them take over for a long time. Here's a, here's a bad bug right there. Leaf hopper bug. Now I don't know if I'm I usually don't do anything about them because the predatory bugs need food. So if I keep killing off or you know, I don't like to kill anything to begin with, um, but if I do something about them, then the predators don't have any food. So you really have to, I mean, unless you have a really big infestation, you got to let, you got to give them, you know, you got to let them be. So I'm going to let them be and he may destroy my cucumber crop. And you know, if he does, that's part of the part of the, um, price I have to pay um, but I, in the meantime I've got tons of cucumbers I got more than enough cucumbers right now so you know if they last a little while and I expect them to last not too long because this is North Carolina and there's the humidity and you know and and that brings on the mildew the downy mildew and the um this is a part of part of the process so uh, there's a cucumber right there anyway so that is what I wanted to show you. Oh, I'll show you some okra too. These are a little, uh-oh. Oh, my husband forgot to remove that one. I, I cover them up so that the uh, rabbits or voles or whatever, uh, at night the deer spe especially, aren't um, going to chomp on them. So these are our okra coming up. And despite the fact I, I planted them quite a long time ago, planted a lot of them, and it's really taken till now for them to start coming up so they're really I mean even though the beds are kind of warmer and we had some warm temperature they really waited until it, it it got considerably you know in the 80s and 90s to start popping up so anyway I hope you all have a great gardening day and uh, talk to you next time <laughs>